this role, uh, both through the uh, Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy, through the Costco Open Space Agency and the MRCA, and that is their uh, Deputy Director, Rory Skay, who's with us this evening. If I missed anyone else, I'm going to feel very bad uh, at, at the end of the meeting. So what we'd like to do is, is pick five people at a time when, you're, when your hands go up. If you, if you do have a question, if you could uh, come up toward the, the front and, and, and ask a question. I, this may be because, and so I'll, I'll say something, this may be because I was born in the Midwest in the 1960s. Um, I, I really enjoy civility and I do think we should listen to each other. I think it's okay to cheer if you hear something you like, but please, Give it's most important to give respect to those to those viewpoints or, or ideas that are not your own because that is that's I I believe that's who we are as a people. So um, looks like we have two people lined and up. I want to make sure to I don't know if we have anybody in the back. So uh, um, sir, I want to please come forward. So, um, the what? I guess we'll, I, I guess rather we'll just go with a, a line on the, on the left side of the, uh, I wanted to go and call, but I do want to make sure some people in the back who are, uh, have been out in the cold do have the, the, the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, I would, I would, please, there, there might be a lot of people that like, would like to speak, so I'm going to get out of the, uh, feedback range. There may be a lot of people who, who would like to speak, so please, um, um, let's listen up. Let's people. Let's let people finish their comments and um, uh, and let's lend them our ears. My name is Randy Feilish, and I have a question for you. How did you validate that it was a mountain lion that killed the alpacas without doing a necropsy? And if you didn't do a necropsy, is one planned? The um, so we uh, that role is played by the California De the Department of Fish and Wildlife, who has quite a bit of expertise in this. And I, I don't know the best person to, to ask, but this is something they do fairly regularly, and they do have a rigorous process. Yeah, thank you. And I just want to introduce um, Mike, uh, he, Mike Stefanik is our Assistant Chief of Enforcement, and uh, his staff, as well as uh, my biological staff, do a lot of these verifications and validations, and, uh, and his staff was the the person that did this. So Mike has a lot of experience in this area, and so I'll, I'll introduce Mike. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Thanks for um, having us here. It's a good opportunity for everybody to discuss a really sensitive issue. We appreciate the uh, opportunity to do so. Specifically to your question, um, the officer in this particular incident uh, has the same as I do, 25 years of investigating these. and. Obviously, we can't do a necropsy specifically on a lion or the animals involved, potentially, that would zero out one specific animal, but there's evidence that's consistent historically with what is a typical mountain lion kill, as well as, which is probably the most significant um, piece of evidence for us when we investigate it, is um, paw prints in the area. So in this particular incident, um, there were several locations that the officer that investigated identified uh, paw prints, tracks, uh, several, and there was nothing that would indicate there was any other animal besides the hoofstock that was present and the lion at the time. And that's what we used to uh, make the decision on this permit. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Mike. Hello, uh, yes, I also believe in civility and I think killing a mountain lion is not civil. Yeah. And I think that to express indignation over people who are speaking for a voiceless animal while, and asking everybody to remain oh so very polite while uh, there's a permit issue that would allow someone to gun down an animal is a, a case of selective indignation. So we are here because these animals cannot speak for themselves. And we're here to let everybody know that a time has come in America where people are saying, no, we can't treat animals as property. We can't kill them when they become inconvenient after we've invaded their home and their land. And so if nothing else, 
let the government officials know it's no longer business as usual. I get the sense that all the people here are very caring and want to help the animals and that you are constrained by laws. But let me tell you, I've also seen many, many cases when people don't turn up, when people don't get loud, and those animals are killed. Boom, 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 one after the other. The U.S. government kills millions of animals. The USDA has an entire agency called Wildlife Services whose only job it is is to go out and kill wolves and coyotes and mountain lions and they've killed millions of them. Don't take my word for it, look it up. And they're doing it all at the behest of the cattle industry. So what happens is anytime industries want to let their animals run loose and they don't want to have to pay the expenses of the fencing and all the wonderful peaceful solutions that you've outlined, then the animal gets killed and now all of a sudden it's open season on that predator animal when it's just doing what nature indicated it should do. So I guess the, the most important thing that the people who showed up here tonight are saying is no more business as usual. No more business as usual with this killing. The killing has to stop. And we're killing all these animals all across the country. And then we're wondering why our ecosystems are just disappearing. So this, we're speaking not just to these individuals who are hardworking individuals. We're talking to the powers that be in the US government, the elected officials. You want to get reelected? Speak for the animals because Americans care about their animals. They care about the wildlife. And they're sick and tired of these killing machines that are going out and just killing left and right, all these permits. My question is, with all, of, all the stuff that you outlined, the solutionary approaches, why weren't they implemented before the permit was issued to kill this mountain lion? So I... In the Santa Monica Mountains. So she's a maybe on killing mountain lions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he wants someone. Yeah. It would help if folks had questions, but we will welcome comments. The um, and Man. Okay, the question was. question, but her question was, why weren't the solution-oriented approaches implemented before the permit was issued? I, the, um, I, I think the fish and wildlife folks might be... <laughs> okay, I'll address that. Um, there's two victims, residents that suffered loss in this recent... Okay. Difference. There are two individuals are involved in this. Both suffered loss prior to this incident. Both received information. Both received information and recommendations from department staff, as well as potentially some National Park Service input. Can't confirm. I don't know that, but I know for a fact both of the victims in this case received information as to some of the protective measures they could take. Understand that, but they employed at the time the protection measures they had the opportunity to do. This, the second facility was fairly robust and that protection failed. The first one is one of the recommendations that you heard here tonight, which has to do with motion sensing light. That was present and on, and there was also some electrified fences. I've heard tonight that Maybe that's not a very robust, or what they used wasn't very robust in terms of protecting the animals. Understand that. But the, the main comment here is that they did suffer loss prior to the incident, and they did try to employ some stuff. Maybe it doesn't meet everybody's standards. Understand that. But they tried. I'm not saying that to protect them, but in answer to your question, they actually did do something to try to prevent this from happening. Not good enough. Understand. But they did... But in answer specifically to the question, they did attempt to do something. And the, any further on that? Okay. Thank you. Thanks. One of the things that I heard is that the, the person did sleep in their car to 
honk the horn if the lion came around. So, I mean, let, let's be let's be careful about. Let, let, let's not judge others in, in tents. I know we do have particular feelings about this, but um, again, I think if we're going to make a uh, if we're going to make a long term solution to this mountains wide, we're we're going to have to have to work with everyone. Ma'am. Thanks. Um, so before I ask my question, I think it would be great for the folks outside if this, uh, the visuals of this presentation were somehow made available online, because uh, out there you yeah. couldn't see the screen. Um, <clears throat> um, it, I get the, the bigger issue and all, you know, the, the future of the lions, but what can be done right now to save P45, A, and B? Um, I don't understand, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure I understand all the facts, I've heard a lot of rumors. <laughs> I don't know what's true and what isn't, but in, if it, it's, from what I've heard, it sounds like they are, P45 might be the line that, ate, that killed those alpacas, but it's not even conclusive. And then if this hunter who's been hired by the um, oh, alpaca wow. owners has a permit, does that, is that indefinite? Is that for 10 days? And, and how does he know which line he's killing? I mean, what if he kills the wrong one? Yeah. I'll answer the couple things that I do know, and then I'm going to have to, I'll, I'll ask the fish and wildlife folks to, um, what I was going to ask is, uh, um, Jeff, do we have points that put the lion at the location at that time? Yes. So we do have points that put the, at, at the depredations, we do have points, so it's, it, it is very, very likely um, that uh, that animal the um, I think as as we heard earlier from um, from Reed, who represents the landowner, and from um, California Department of Fish and Wildlife, is they are trying to work out a solution um, um, to this. And I think um, uh, the office the office of supervisor Sheila Kuehl has been involved in as well to try to find a place uh, uh, to try to find a solution that works for everyone. But. So I want to thank you for that question because I think that is really the, the question of the moment. There's, there's longer term issues as we've heard tonight, but what can we do to, to save the animal, whether it's P45 or another lion? Um, I think, first of all, we all recognize that um, much, much of what potentially occurs here rests with the permittee. And so it, whatever they decide to do to try to move forward um, with uh, handling the situation, uh, by you know taking the animal or by trying to work out something else whether they try to have it captured and, and relocated and, and in terms of the permittees uh, discretion right now we're trying to work the Department of Fish and Wildlife is trying to work directly with uh, with the permittee and the representatives to come up with a solution that will save the the, the lion that is uh, in question there's this hunter who they've hired to try and kill this lion. So as they're quote unquote trying, are they putting the hunter on pause or is the lion in danger right this minute? So the, the, the question is, uh, is the, the person, the, the, what we call the agent, who is the, the person who could potentially be hunting the lion, putting a pause, you know, taking a pause right now while we try to work out solutions. Uh, I've been in a lot of discussions. I've been in a lot of discussions today trying to find out the latest information, and um, I don't know if anyone knows the answer to that. I will ask now. We've been trying to understand that as well, um, but we've also been trying to work, again, directly with the landowners and their representatives to hope that they're putting the pause button on this for the moment while we work out a solution. Let me... Uh, I'm just, I'm just trying to tell you what I know. So I'm asking if there's anyone, if there's anyone here representing... Um, the, the the landowner that, that knows anything more about this, um, we, we're we're hoping that that's the case. Do you, do you have do you have information in this regard? The question is, the the question was is there um, is is the the agent who's the hunter of the animal trying to pause for the moment to allow us some room to negotiate a solution. And like I said, I've been trying to get information. The department's been trying to get that information. I don't know whether we have that or not because things are, you know, fluid. Okay. Um, I was, I spoke with uh, Sheila Kuehl's office, Nicole. I don't know if she's here today. Uh, well, Nicole, I want to, oh, okay. I want to talk to you. Um, 
Uh, and I also spoke with the general counsel of the Fish and Wildlife, and uh, she asked us to, well, she asked my client to hold off for the night so that they consider uh, some solutions for tomorrow. And my client is very in favor of that and totally agree. So nothing's happening. Nothing's happening tonight. Um, and I've been texting her while we're here, and she... Let me tell you something. I am thrilled she did not come. <laughs> okay? <laughs> she, did, she was going to come, and I strongly advised her against it because you guys are pretty hostile, even to me. <laughs> okay, like I said, when I was up there, you guys were pretty hostile to me, and she wouldn't be able to take it. So, having... To, to finish the answer, the, to finish the answer, um, the, I, I can't remember, uh, your presentation was excellent, and I was taking pictures of slides, and I was texting Victoria uh, with pictures of those slides, and she does want to speak with uh, the Mountain Lion Foundation and Jay Kuehl's office about the enclosures as a possible alternative. She's considering all options, but right now, the option of killing the lion tonight is not on the table. Yeah. Ten days. Would you want to read one? No. All but one is gone. I, I don't know when it was issued. I haven't seen it. Well, that's the idea. If we can make a... Uh, if we can come up with a resolution with Fish and Wildlife, then they would go bury that one. Uh, but if not, that's what's going to attract the lion and allow the hunter to take it. Really? So I, I, I so so one of the. I think they call them more derbs. It takes great courage, I think, to come and speak before this group, a group of people that may not disagree, uh, that may not agree with you. I think it takes even more courage to try to find a solution that'll work for everyone. Um, I uh, personally want to to, um, to thank you, Reed, for for coming to speak and for considering that. Um, but. Next person, ma'am. Hi. Hi, my name is Simone Reyes. I'm with Social Compassion and Legislation. We help to enact bills that stop the atrocities like we're having here, and we recognize the importance of social media. So let's all decide today, hashtag save P45, make this go viral. Because as we have found in legislation, it has been said and proven so goes California, so goes the world. And the world is not going to be happy with California for putting a bounty on the head of a mountain lion for being a mountain lion. Thank you. Hashtag P save P45. Thank you. Beth, are you next? Beth Pratt from the National Wildlife Federation. Thanks, everybody. And I really appreciate everybody showing up, um, the livestock owners, people who are passionate. Uh, those of you who work with me know how passionate I am about protecting these mountain lions. And uh, I just want to say the National Wildlife Federation is here to help and work on solutions that are winning for everybody. We want to get that corridor in so that mountain lions can exist here. But if we don't work out how to all coexist, with these solutions we're talking about, it's not gonna work. So we have offered, uh, we work with the National Park Service and their scientists, we work with a lot of groups like the Mountain Lion Foundation, the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy, but we have put on the table to try to help if the depredation is taken off the table, we would help financially to try to assist the, the property owner with some of these enclosures or a guard dog. Again, we want to work collaboratively. Collaboratively, I echo David's sentiments. Let's take the anger down, let's talk to each other, and let's get these solutions in place that wins for everybody. We don't want mountain lions to die in the Santa Monica Mountains. We don't want livestock to die. We want people to be safe and coexist together. 
And the question I will ask to all of you, and please come up to me after, how can we help achieve that, no matter where you stand? So thank you for being here, everybody. Thanks, Beth. The next person, I don't know, who's next? In? Okay, ma'am. Hi. This is amazing to look out at this. I just want to say that. So I'm wondering, uh, when it comes to cruelty to animals and, or protecting your animals, I actually call the Agura shelter. The answer is that you give them food and water and shelter that's appropriate for the environment. That did not happen here. And so these people are irresponsible. So I'm wondering, can any charges be brought against them for being irresponsible? There you go. I want to save P45, there's no question. But when people are out there that are irresponsible, this will continue to happen. So we do need to do something to protect the cats and the livestock. I love animals. But people that are irresponsible should not have animals. That's all. Sir. Hi, I'm Thomas White. I live in the uh, in Malibu Mountains. I've been out here for like 35 years. I've had goats. Uh, I've had uh, other animals. Um, I've lived here a long time. I've been close enough to throw stones at mountain lions and lucky enough they walked away. Um, I have bobcats come across my property every week. I have, uh, I live in harmony with nature. And I wanna say that I'm scared shitless about P45. I don't go out at night. It's, it's scary to have animals that can eat you. Move. Move. Everyone here goes home and locks LA. the door and doesn't worry about mountain lions coming through the window. Okay. So, I want to say also, uh, there's a lot of people who made impassioned pleas here, so it wasn't apparently a time limit on what you could say or how long you could say it. First things is, um, someone says, we're here in their property. I'm sorry, mankind has been living in the Santa Monica's for more than 40,000 years. And the mountain lions have only been here for 10,000. So we've been here a lot longer than they have. Okay, so everyone here is, is arguing against archeological evidence, but the people were here first. Thank you very much on that one. You guys are just arguing against some of the ridiculous factors thing, okay? Now, hey, talk about a hostile environment. Someone just said you weren't hostile, but you're acting hostile. I'm st stating simple facts. Thank you very much. Now, the next thing is, is that, and I, my, my fundamental question is to Jeff, just a second. Could we uh, please give the gentleman the courtesy of listening to what he has to say? No. Okay. The fundamental question I have to Jeff, which makes me most, I say I have had several neighbors and close friends lose animals. And we, we have, my neighbors and I have lost the animals that they loved and cherished and fed daily and petted, okay? These animals were in careful pens. These animals were cared for. They were, and all the people I know are extremely responsible about their animals. They've all lived here for like 20 years. They have not had losses until this last year. So my question to the expert here was said is, cougars come in and kill multiple kills at a given time. This is quite unusual for our local experience of having an animal come in and kill all the animals in a pen. And so this is why my neighbors are really worried about what's happening here and they say, please take this one rogue animal that is deviant from all the other animals and take him out of here because he kills all the animals in one pen. Our prior 30 years experience is we'll lose one animal at a time. We can live with that. We have not had depredations done until quite recently when you're saying, hey, why is there having 10 animals killed on a given night? This is quite unusual. So that's why someone says, it's got to stop. Let's have this mountain lion taken. So everyone's gone to parks, service, and, and fish and game, and said, 
please relocate this lion. And the reply was, we can't and we're not going to relocate the lion. They've been asked many times, please relocate the lion. And the answer is, we're not going to relocate the lion. And so, at that point, this person says, I'm really not going to have all my animals killed because this lion is not going to work out. So I'm going to end up by saying thank you very much for the time. The major point that all my neighbors feel is why can't this lion, why is this lion not considered deviant, a rogue, not natural, or abnormal in his presentation of killing 10 animals in a given night compared to only losing one animal which is what us has been our experience. I'm talking about data. I'm not talking about my opinion. None of you guys are arguing about data. You're all talking about your opinion. So I'm going to go and ask the expert what the data is. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, uh, thank you for your question. Only you, buddy. All right. Um, I <laughs> all right, if everyone can quiet down a bit, I'd appreciate it. Um, so I think the question was, does, is P45, this individual lion acting rogue, um, is a common question I've been getting because he has killed so many animals at once. And during my presentation, I mentioned that it is not unusual whatsoever for mount lions to kill multiple animals in a pen and only feed off of one. It's the same analogy David used earlier with a house cat in a box with many mice. So it's not, it's not unusual at all. And P45 is not the only lion doing this out there now. He's the one that has generated a lot of press. But we have other lions doing the same thing now. Um, P30 has killed livestock. P27 has, P12 has, and P1 has. This is nothing new. Um, so P45 is a lion being a lion. If P45 is removed, then one of these other lions will come in and do the same exact thing. Um, I don't know if that answered the question or not. Okay. Um, another question I've been getting too is if we, another question I get is did we relocate P45 into the mountains? Did we move this lion in here? There, it's an absolute no. So we don't move lions at all. We're just a research, we're doing research what naturally is going on. We're the eye in the sky. We'll capture animals and release them on the site. I actually captured P45 at a location after he killed an alpaca and the landowner was willing to work with us. And since then that landowner has improved their husbandry practices by building full pens. And I released P45 right on the site with the radio collar. I can keep rambling or I'll take it. I, I, I think these are all good questions. We've reached the time. Uh, we've actually reached the end of the meeting. We're going to continue to go on with the meeting. But I would ask, I, I think the one thing that might make us call the meeting, or you folks could stay here, is please listen to each other. I know that people are charged about this issue, but please listen to each other. Um, Thank you. Yes, I, I did listen to this gentleman, and as an attorney representing environmental organizations um, trying to enforce CEQA and other coastal laws, I am absolutely appalled to hear something like that. Um, so unscientific, that is what mountain lions do. And I think it's almost like a provocation when you look at the, I think it was it, the Malibu Alpaca Ranch, the, the ramshackle operation that there is, is almost on purpose creating a situation like that. And I can tell them, if this mountain lion is being killed, they should be looking at coastal enforcement and whether they comply with the conditions of their permit, because this is scandalous what that looks like. And I have a question for the Department of Fish and Wildlife, and I should call them Fish and Game. I've had two recent cases, one concerning the subdivision uh, nearby the, uh, the, the planned overpass, another one in Malibu Canyon adjacent to a major wildlife habitat linkage. Why is it that you are faster in issuing depredation permits and making comments under CEQA on projects that should protect our open spaces? What is going on? 
decades ago, you have had permits and diligently commented, and now you're issuing a permit that, have you even read the latest publications that the, the mountain population in the San Monica Mountains is on the brink of extinction? And you're allowing one property owner a permit that will hasten the extinction of the regional population because they're angry. Is that more important to the Department of Fish and Wildlife than commenting on CEQA and helping to protect the open spaces in the San Monica Mountains, the National Recreation Area? Couldn't you have consulted with the National Park Service and the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy and agencies that care about the environment before you issue the permit? Before I let them answer, I, I, I want you folks to know that while we, the two, our, our two agencies work closely together and are uh, completely united in our desire to uh, implement the laws of the state of California and of the United States, and um, uh, there's no, uh, it's a very cooperative relationship. There's no, uh, um, we support each other. There's no daylight between the way that we work together. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks for the question. I think the question is related to um, some of the various responsibilities that the department has. So with regard to issuing the permit, um, I think we explained that a number of times, but just wanted to reiterate that we, under the law, we're obligated under circumstances such as these to issue a permit when it's requested of us. So we've talked about um, the potential to change the law and that people have discussed that, uh, you know, the desire to do that in the future. And I, I assume that will happen down the road. With, with regard really quickly to SQL comment letters, um, we have that responsibility as well, you're right. We write a lot of SQL comment letters. Um, our SQL comment letters are recommendations under the law, unless we have a, a species that's listed as threatened or endangered or fully protected. And so we only have certain authority under SQL comment, under our SQL comment. So I just want to make that clear. We do as many SQL comment letters as we can. We have to triage those because we are understaffed to comment on every single project. But I, I can tell you that our staff work very hard and very diligently to get those, those comment letters out and to represent um, wildlife resources as trusty agency. So I, I hope that answers your question. The question is what are the department's priorities and as regional manager, I can tell you that we have way more work than we can actually do. And I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to explain I'm just trying to explain the reality of, of um, working for an agency, we we make decisions every day about what's the most important project that we need to be commenting on, whether it's it's important to comment on the notice of preparation, make, make sure that's in the record, um, and or the, the forthcoming EIR. So we do that every day. It's a difficult job for our staff to keep up with all those things. I, I appreciate your comment. I will take that back to, to my staff in the Santa Monica Mountains, and, and we'll talk about that. But, but I, I can assure you that we have staff doing all we can to address as many letters, as many projects as we can. Thank you. So how would, so we're at eight thirty. How would folks like to go forward? We can give you a tour of the enclosure. Do we want to? I, I want to make sure everyone has a chance to speak that wants to speak. Um, I do want. Um, I do feel like we have. <laughs> are there any different opinions that we are? Are there any different voices? Because I think we. Great. 